All right, guys, welcome back. In this section, we are going to be learning the concepts of Python networking in a very practical manner. And we are going to be doing this by creating a project called reverse shell. So the first thing that I did was I went to file, created a new project and titled it reverse shell. And then I went over here and put our interpreter as 3.6.0. Obviously you can use any other Python version too, but I'll highly recommend you use a version that is above three. And that's it. Now that we have created our project of reverse shell, I'll create two new files. One is server.py. So let's create a server file. And then we'll create another Python file, which is called client.py. Now, if you remember in the last video, we talked about where these files are going to go. The client.py, for example, let's say you're a hacker and you want to hack some victim. So this client.py file is going to go into a victim's computer and the server.py file obviously according to its name is going to go to our server that has a static IP address. In this video, I'm just going to be showing you executing both of them on my local computer. But by the end of this section, we'll be able to upload this on a cloud server on digital ocean. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to work on the server.py file. So let's close this client.py file down. And now we are going to import two sub modules into our project. The first sub module is called socket. So we are going to import that. So socket is just a way in which two computers can connect to each other. If you don't remember from our basics of Python section, just a little bit of a revision. And then we are going to import something known as a sys. So this sys is actually used to implement command line and terminal commands into our Python file. So for example, if you open up a command prompt and type in dir, press enter, it's going to list all of the folders inside the previous folder. Similarly, we can do this in our Python file using this sys sub module. After this, we are just going to create a function that will be used to create a socket. So we'll just write def and then create underscore socket and we'll put a bracket and then a colon. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a comment above it so that we remember what this function is used for. Create a socket. And I'm just going to write a little bit of what a socket is so that if you're reading the code again, you actually have a little bit of help. Connect to computers. That sounds about right. After we have defined this function, we are going to declare three global variables. Now, what are global variables? So for example, if I declare some variables inside this function, I won't be able to access them outside this create socket function. But when you declare variables globally, you can access these variables even outside these functions. So we're just going to write global and then I'm going to write the variable name called host, which is also known as the IP address. And then the second variable is port and then not import is called port. And then the third variable is called socket. I'm just going to name it S. All right, now that we have created three global variables, we'll just go into what should be the value of all these three variables. So the first variable host is going to be empty. Why? Because we are going to put the server.py file into our server and the IP address that is the host, it's going to be itself. That's why we are not going to be putting anything inside host right now. And then we are going to write the port number as 9999. This is a very uncommon port and it is not used a lot. That's why I'm using 9999. If you use a port like something like 20 or 80, then that will be a problem because those ports are already used by FTP and web pages. And if you want a revision of what a port is, let's just imagine that you have Skype and Netflix running at the same time on your computer. Now, how does your internet recognize which data is supposed to be sent to Netflix and which data is supposed to be sent to Skype? It is done using ports because Skype and Netflix run on different ports. So the internet or your router is able to identify on which port the data should be sent to. So if it's Skype, for example, let's say it has a port of 323. I'm just saying a random port. So it's going to send the data to 323, that is the Skype port. But if it's a data port of let's say 823, for example, I'm just saying that it is the port of Netflix, it's going to send the data of Netflix to 823 port. Similarly, in our case, when 
uh, program is trying to connect to our code is going to use the port of 9999 you can use the same port because it's not used a lot now that we have declared the port the next thing we are going to do is actually create a socket so we'll use the s variable that we have created and write in socket dot socket now this is the function that we use to create a socket the socket dot socket now that we have created a socket what sometime happens is that a socket isn't created and some kind of error pops up so we are going to enclose this whole function in some kind of try exception code we are just going to write try over here and then we are going to give it an indent by pressing the tab button and then after the try we are going to write except and we are going to write socket dot error so if any kind of error is there is going to go to accept and then socket dot error contains the error and we are going to store this error in the object of message and then we are going to convert this message to string and we are going to display it or pop it up on the console so we are just going to write print socket creation error plus str which converts it to string and msg message so this is how basically you create a socket now that we have created a socket in the next video we are going to learn how to bind the socket to the host and port and i'll see you in the next video